good afternoon auction fans uh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, an interesting item we've got coming up in our next photographic auction at Aston's which is on the 11th of July 2019 uh, so there's a whole sub genre of uh, photographs which people have just started to get interested in called walking photos uh, and these if you're if you're watching this and you're probably over the age of 50 you might even remember day trip to the seaside when you were a kid, uh, walking down the promenade, photographer comes up, takes your picture, you probably didn't even realise it, thrusts like a little raffle ticket into your hand with a number on it, uh, and then later in the day you could um, go back to the beach hut and find your photograph and buy a picture of you walking down the prom. Now that might sound a bit strange these days, but back then from maybe the end of the Second World War through to the early 60s, uh, not everybody had a camera. And even if they lucky enough to have somebody with a camera in the, in the family, nearly always it was the husband or the dad that had the camera, uh, which means most of the pictures would be of wife and kids and not the whole family. So this was sometimes one of the very few chances that you had of having maybe husband and wife or the whole family group together. Uh, and they would take pictures like this. Um, these are actually fairly early ones. Uh, the whole system really took off at the end of the First World War and reached its heyday round about the middle of the 40s through to the middle of the 50s. Uh, so these are the sort of prints that you might find uh, in your family photo album. Uh, they were enlarged to postcard size. They would have cost two shillings a time. Um, and really, you would think that's possibly the only record of these sort of photographs that are left. Well, we've been really lucky in this sale because we have what is almost unheard of, a selection of the paper negatives which came out of the camera. Um, the paper negatives, so they use a roll of photographic paper inside the camera, which gave you a paper negative. The paper negative was then re-photographed to give you a positive, probably enlarged a bit because these are... Uh, two and a quarter by three and a half so they would be enlarged to maybe postcard size so these sort of things hardly ever exist because they were meant to be used once and then thrown away or maybe just stored for a couple of days um, and then they were off and running the next day take some more pictures of people um, and different there were several different companies doing this sort of thing uh, one of which was called Sunbeam Photos that were based down in uh, Margate in Kent um, and as you can see, different cards from different companies, uh, because they were using different, com different cameras, they're different sizes. So these are quite an unusual survivor. Uh, and what hardly ever survives is this. So this is part of an uncut roll of the paper negatives which have come out of one of the cameras uh, used by Sunbeam photos. Now Sunbeam are probably the biggest company doing these walking type photos in the country. Um, and they had several branches all the way along the, uh, uh, the, the Kent coast. Um, so, true Blue Peter style, here's one I did earlier. So this is an enlarged um, copy of the paper negative, And then when it's photographed, you end up with the positive. And this is really fantastic because obviously not only you can see uh, husband and wife walking along the prom but it's pretty obvious in the background that the picture was taken by Sunbeam photos. Um, so these are a very rare uh, survivor um, but what never survives and what is really difficult find even find any information on the actual cameras well until now that is because this is actually one of the cameras that was used by Sunbeam photos um, and it was designed from the ground up it might look a little Heath Robinson but it does everything it needs to do it's a focusing lens decent quality Tessar um, lens on there it's designed to take a roll of a hundred um, a strip of photographic paper that would allow a hundred exposures on one roll uh, as we saw earlier and believe it or not this is the actual camera that took these prints and how do we know well because this is Sunbeam camera number 11. See the number there? It's number 11 on the top, number 11 on the back, number 11 on the inside. And at first I didn't realise it, but this is actually a number 11 
on the top of the paper negative which then is cropped out when the print is made. So several of these um, uh, have got different numbers because obviously it's a big company so they had several cameras and they might have had one camera maybe away being serviced or being reloaded so they had to keep, keep the cameras turning around. Um, and then if you look it's quite remarkable how re relatively even the spacing is in, uh, in between each photograph. And I couldn't quite work out how they managed to do that with what's essentially a homemade camera. So although it's quite a good quality, it's a one piece die casting, um, but it's just got a real dead simple wind on mechanism here. So obviously if you've got a roll of paper that's gonna take a hundred shots, it's pretty thick. So as you get through the roll, you'll need uh, a less number of turns to move the paper the same amount. So I couldn't work out how that was done. The photographer can't count because he's too busy. He can't say, oh, this is shot number 12. I only need to move this three times and shot number 27, I need to move it twice or whatever. So then I had a look inside the camera. I can get it open. And you can see here, here's the, uh, this is the take up spool. So the, the, the spool here would have all the unexposed paper on it. This is spring loaded to keep some tension on there. Um, and again, it says number 11 on the inside. And if you look very carefully, you probably can't see it unless we do a close up. But there's actually a number 11 on a little piece of plastic in there. And that prints the number 11 on the, um, onto, the neg onto the paper negative. But that still doesn't answer how, come the, how the photographer knew how much to move the, um, the wind on. Until we look at this. Uh, so this is the back of the camera and as you can see there's the um, typical red window that you get on, the, on most cameras of the, of the day. Um, and if we turn over this roll of untrimmed paper, you'll see there's a number printed on the top which corresponds to the number of the photograph. So what happened was, when this was in the camera, like this, with three hands, the photographer took the picture he then wound on looking at the little red window on the back until the next win the next number came in the center of the window took another picture did the same wound on until the number was centralized in the uh, in the red window so really simple really effective and obviously the photographer hadn't got time to waste he just needed to take a picture he was selling the prints at maybe two shillings a time so he just needed to be taking hundreds and hundreds of pictures one after the other um, and the camera, as I say, is reasonably sophisticated. It's got a focusing lens here, uh, and it's graduated when you move this pointer here from four feet to infinity. So that allowed for the, the photographer would pre focus, wait for someone to come the required distance, take the picture. So if it was a walkie picture, he would maybe like six or ten feet away, but there's some here which are obviously much closer, uh, and this will allow him to work from a close up of uh, four, about four feet. So really, really unusual to find. Might not look very much, but historically a very important camera. This would have taken probably tens of thousands, if not more, uh, of photographs. That'd be all around the country. Everybody's photo albums maybe got one of these in it from, you know, from their parents or their grandparents, but you never see the hardware. So this is your opportunity. If you're interested in walkies or even early form of street photography, which is obviously all the, uh, all the rage these days, then log on uh, when the catalogue is online for the July the 11th auction at Aston's Auctioneers um, and you'll see this and a couple of other cameras which, uh, which we can also uh, date to just after the Second World War which were also used by Sunbeam Photos in Margate. That's it, thank you for looking, for watching and uh, we'll be back hopefully with some more riveting information uh, in time for the next auction.